Hello, movie patient, and welcome to Film Therapy. I am your film therapist, also known as Brienne, also known as Miss Movies. And every day or week or whenever I decide to do this, we have a special guest. And I'm hearing myself, and so I'm turning off my computer. Okay, so that works well. We always have a special guest, and today that special guest is Sasha Pearl Raver. Hello, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we love, and that's why we have Joker with us. So I'm excited that you are here, even though you're not here here. I'm excited that you're here here, if that makes sense. I'm super excited to be here and to talk about all the weird stuff in my brain. Excellent. And um, we do ha we'll have some people in the, uh, I like to call it the waiting room, which is our chat on YouTube. So hello to all those people that will be joining us soon, especially Randall Sands, because I already see you in the chat. Hi, Randall. Um, so on this show, here's what film therapy is. What we do is we, uh, I ask the patient three questions. It's always the same three questions about film. The first one being, what is a film that inspires you? I don't know what I was about to say. The second one is, what is a film or a scene from a film that triggers a memory for you? Perhaps that's a painful memory. Perhaps it's a happy memory. And what is a film that helps you through difficult times? So before I get started, I do want to say that I'm, I started this show because I suffer from depression. And I want to let you know that I'm not a real therapist. I just play one on the internet. And um, if anyone needs anything while they are watching the show and is having a difficult time, I would like you to please either go see your doctor or call 911 or find some help that you need immediately. That is my disclaimer. I like that disclaimer. Uh, I did not know that that's why you started the show, but that makes me feel a lot better because I feel like Mental health is something that has been sort of shoved into the shadows for so long. And I am somebody who suffers from OCD and anxiety. And it took me until recently to actually like go to a therapist and get medication. And I wish that it wasn't something that was considered so embarrassing and maligned because had I been on medication like a decade ago, oh my God, my life would have been so much better. Drugs are the best, especially legal drugs that actually help your crazy SSRI whatevers. So that's awesome, dude. Good for you. And yeah, like everybody needs something, whether it's a movie or a little Zoloft. <laughs> that's, not, that's true. I, uh, my issue was needing to get off of drugs. Not like- Which kinds of drugs? Not like crazy drugs, like birth control. I had to- Oh yeah. Of that so I could stop being, I could be less crazy and um, which was nice. And now I- um, so just so you know, and um, other movie patients might already know that I suffer from suicidal thoughts. So that was one of the re main reasons my doctor said, oh, hey, uh, you should stop taking birth control and you'll probably stop having suicidal thoughts, which is what happened. I mean, I still get them every now and then, but they don't come on like they used to. That's crazy. A girlfriend of mine had terrible, terrible depression. And similarly, her birth control pills made it way worse. And what's interesting is when I went off of birth control, P.S. being a woman, it's hard, you guys, whether, you know, there's just all kinds of stuff, but the hormonal stuff was so intense that it did feel kind of like my body was kicking something like heroin. Like you feel this insane withdrawal. I felt like my anxiety spiked so high because you've been doing this weird thing to your brain and your body convincing it that it's pregnant basically so that you won't get pregnant. But that is so interesting. What birth control were you on? Um, I think it was just generic, but I have, I can't remember. It started with a Z <laughs> and that's all I remember. And then you knew that it made you feel bad. And you so, were like, I'm not taking this anymore. Yeah, okay. It was Zovia. That's what I took. Oh. But it was like, and like I had do done various types over the years. So, and they all had that same effect. So it had to have been something. Anyway. Mm. Well, I'm glad you're off of it. Me too. I'm in a much happier place in life. I mean, I do therapy as well because, um, you know, just taking the drugs away wasn't going to solve my problems. So I also go to therapy and that's regular. So yay. yay. And then we have film therapy where we get <laughs> make everything better. That's right. Let's get started with film therapy. So Sasha, what is a movie that inspires you? This is a really hard question. And I should admit to the people who are watching that I 
was I knew that some of the questions and I started doing a little bit of research and then I decided I wasn't going to do any more research because therapy is supposed to be about what's actually going on in your brain at any time. And I was like, oh, I'll just sort of let the thoughts come as they are. First thought, best thought. So when you say inspiration, there are a couple things I think about. I think about movies that made me want to move to Los Angeles and get involved in the film industry. I think about movies that sort of inspire me to be a better person. I think there's so many different levels of inspiration, but the thing that keeps coming into my head, I mean, there's two movies right now that are fighting it out. Uh, I have on one side <laughs> the, the Virgin Suicides, which oh, maybe it's just because we've been talking about <laughs> suicidal tendencies. Mm -hmm. Because I, I love that movie in so many different ways. I think that it was such a beautiful adaptation of a writer who I love, Jeffrey Eugenides. His book is so wonderful. But Sofia Coppola, who I think everyone was sort of rooting against when she decided to be a director because of what had happened with when she was in Godfather 3 and also because of who her father is. People just expected her to not be deserving. And I think that that film is so incredible. And that to me is really inspirational. And I... I'm always so inspired by powerful, smart, capable women in this industry. But I think the movie that is winning in my brain right now is Goodwill Hunting. Nice. I remember seeing Goodwill Hunting. Again, a therapy movie. Perfectly on point. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was in college and I came in under one major and I wasn't really happy. I was here at USC in LA. And I remember going with my friends to the Beverly Connection back when there was this rad frozen yogurt place called Humphrey Yogurt. And we went and saw, <laughs> <laughs> right, the best name ever for a yogurt place. Uh, and we went to go see a movie and we didn't know anything about it. But I had a crush on both Ben Affleck going all the way back to Voyages of the Mimi, which was a show on PBS that he did that was educational when he was like 10 years old. And I liked- wow. Oh that yeah, dude. All back. That is. Have you ever back. seen it? No, I've never seen it. I thought it, you were gonna say the school ties, and I was like, yes, I share this. I share this. Well, I was gonna go to school ties with Matt Damon because <laughs> yeah. that shower scene, girl. Oh, please, <laughs> loved Matt Damon. But yeah, school ties was my Matt Damon introduction. But Voyages and Mimi was a show on PBS that I used to watch after school when I was a kid, and it was Baby Ben Affleck. With his Boston accent too. I learned how to make, uh, how to drink water off of a tent because of that show. Wow. It was educational, cool. man. Yeah, it was a boat. PBS is like the best thing ever, especially right? when you have kids. Oh, yeah. There's so many good, like that show that you're describing sounds like what maybe, well, is more instructional. The one that we like is called Odd Squad, where they like have these kids that like, look up like strange occurrences it's kind of like a kid's x-files if you will. oh that's awesome yeah that's very cool and then what do you learn about like with voyages and mimi you learned about you know it, they were on a boat and they would sail around to different places with odd squad did they is it about like american history is it about uh, science it's about math and some science but mainly math is what they're learning which is great i love it i hate math i'm so bad at math <laughs> Well, anyway, so we go to the we go to the Beverly Connection and we're in line for a movie and we saw this thing that said Goodwill Hunting. And it was an early, like I think it might have been their Oscar qualifying run because it was before the new year. And I ended up taking my parents to see the movie on New Year's Eve because I was like, you have to see this. My dad made me read Howard Zinn uh, when I was in high school. So I was like, you're gonna love this. So we go and we sit down. We don't know what to expect back when you could go to a movie and not know what to expect. Right. And to know that they wrote it and that they wanted to create a platform for themselves and that movie, which is so smart and so brilliant and made me realize that the track that I was on in college was the completely wrong track and then I needed to transfer over to film criticism. I love that movie for a million different reasons, Robin Williams being a huge one of them. What the movie says about friendship and masculinity, but also what it did for me in my life. It made me realize that, you know, I was studying the wrong thing and that what I really loved was film and that I wanted to explore it more deeply. And for that, I will be eternally grateful. What were you studying before? I had come in under uh, humanities, which isn't actually a thing. 
it's like liberal arts basically where you had to do uh, like a fine art, uh, uh, a language, uh, like a science. So I did anthropology and I kept that as a major, but I was also studying theater and I was like, wait a second, I don't want to act. I want to be in charge of film. I want to be involved in film. I want to, I basically realized I wanted to be Leonard Malton. I had always seen him on Entertainment Tonight, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. I want to be in the movies he talks about. And then I was like, wait a second. No, I don't. I want to do exactly what he's doing. I want to talk about these movies and see them and deconstruct them, and I don't care about being in them. And the fact that now I make my living on camera is something that I've had to sort of deal with because I am grateful that people want to pay me to do that, but I don't think that that is where I am. I think people find me like weird enough and loud enough and interesting enough to put me in front of a camera. But the truth is, is I'm much happier behind the scenes. Interesting. I like that. Um, I, I want to ask you then, since you say Leonard Moulton, and I know, I'm sure I know the answer to this. I'm assuming you took his course, which is Cinema 466. And I want to know, like, how that went, what movies you may have seen, what, were you in the front row every time? I want to know all about it. Oh, girl. <laughs> I took Cinema 466 four times at USC. Oh. For people who do not know what 466 is, it's the best class in the world. So basically what happens is every Thursday, we would get a movie that was coming out either that Friday or, like, a week from then, whatever, and one of the filmmakers involved in it would show up and talk about it. So... Like I was late to a class once and the movie that we were showing was uh, LA Confidential and I ended up standing in the back next to Curtis Hansen the entire showing. And at the end of the movie, he turns to me and goes, what'd you think? And I just, oh my gosh. I beamed at him. I was like, it's so good. <laughs> I was always the first person to raise my hand in that class. Yes, I was in college, I called myself a grade grub. Like if I got an A minus, I would go to the teacher and be like, you obviously didn't understand what I was trying to say there because I deserve an A. <laughs> so in 466, like I was friends with the TA. The TA I think actually had a crush on me and like let me keep coming back into the class. Even when I wasn't enrolled, I was there every week, first one hand up always asking a question. And it was incredible. Like Edward Norton came in to talk about Fight Club. Annette Benning came in to talk about American Beauty. Um, I mean, it was the best class ever. And yes, it totally, totally shaped and changed my life. Did, did you notice that the fall session of 466 was better than the spring session of 466? <laughs> and I say this because um, I only was able to do the spring session because I had commitments on Thursday evenings in the fall um, for song leading. So I couldn't like go to those ones. So I could only do the spring one my senior year. I was like, oh, these are going to be the movies that come out after all the Oscar stuff. Oh, yeah, so, girl. Uh, I'm feeling a little screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, of course. What would you rather see? L.A. Confidential or like, you know, the, the only movie I can think of that ever has come out around January to March that wasn't garbage was Deadpool, or at least recently, not ever of all time, but recently. Yeah, you know, those are the dregs. That's where they dump everything. But it's still an awesome class to be able to have somebody involved come in and talk to you about the filmmaking process, especially when you're like 19, 20 years old and you're so wide eyed. And now it actually makes me really frustrated when I go to screenings that have Q and A's because I feel like in that class, and maybe this is just my recollection of it, we asked interesting questions. And now whenever I go to a screening, it's not a Q and A. It's a statement and answer. People stand up and say, I love this movie because of this moment and this moment and this moment. They make themselves sound really smart, but they don't actually say anything about what they thought. And they never actually ask a question that can be answered. And it drives me nuts. Right. That's because I, I've been to one Q and a recently in Los Angeles. And that was after the neon demon and uh, Nicholas winding Refn was there as well as Keanu Reeves. Y'all, you would have loved it. And um, the problem is, why didn't you invite me? Um, I, you know what? I didn't even, I don't even know what was going through my brain. I just saw someone post like, oh, this is happening at Arclight. And I was like, okay, tickets. And that was it. That was my, my brain right away. Good for you. That would have been my yeah. brain too. Okay. But go ahead. So you so, go to the screening. The problem is they don't screen the questions ahead of time. And that's what they need to do because you need to like get in a line 
they need to like go down and ask the questions and then they need to just pull out who they're going to use because you get people just talking about nothing and not even asking a question. And it's like, why are we wasting our time? Yeah. It makes me nuts. I loved you in the devil's advocate. And I just wanted to let you know that in this moment, I kept thinking about John Wick and it was so special for me. Dude, <laughs> ask a question. That has nothing to do with anything. It makes me crazy. But yeah, 466. Yeah. Oh, and people sucks. in that class are trying to learn about film and they want to know from the director like certain choices that were made and why. And that's why you have things like better questions, I think. Absolutely. The only one for me, uh, just quickly, so that way um, I can get on to the next question for you so we don't get stuck on 466. Um, but the one that I found really interesting, actually two I found really interesting, but um, Christopher Nolan was there for Insomnia and like that was when he was like pretty, pretty fresh, pretty new. That's so it was awesome. like, oh, so great to see him. Anyway. That's fantastic. And suddenly another movie with Robin Williams. And I also like that they always show a classic movie during the, um, during the class at some point. And ours was Seven Brides for Seven Brothers and Russ Tamlin came and people totally didn't stay for it. And I was like, they missed the best one. I don't know why you wouldn't stay for that and talk, get to talk to him because it was so cool. See, that's rad. Yeah, that class is amazing. Wait, what did he tell you? What did you guys talk about? What were some of the things? Um, oh gosh, he talked about, you know, not just that movie, but also about his career. And Amber was there too. And she was like new to the scene of acting. Um, and he was just like talking about being a dad and like ushering his daughter into the industry, you know, since she's now interested and things like that. That's very cool. That's very cool. Yeah. I love, I love Russ Tamblin. Miss that guy. Anyways, let's get to our second question. So Goodwill Hunting is your inspiration, got you to where you are now. So that's awesome. And now let's go to what's a movie or a scene from a movie that triggers a memory for you that is perhaps painful or it's perhaps happy. You can decide how deep you want this discussion to go. Okay. Okay. I could go with a childhood memory, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go with, this is rel relatively obscure. Do you remember the movie in America, the Jim Sheridan, who also did um, My Left Foot and In the Name of the Father directed, it was pretty autobiographical. Do you remember it? I don't remember it, but was it a mini series by chance? It was not. Okay. It was a movie that Samantha Morton and Patty Constantine starred in, and Jaiman Hansu was also in, and I think he was nominated for an Oscar for like Best Supporting Actor, and it was nominated for writing. But basically the story is uh, Samantha Morton, Patty Constantine moved their family from Ireland to America, just like Jim Sheridan did. They're extremely poor, and they're raising... I think it was two daughters and then they have a third child while they're here. She's pregnant with a third child or maybe they had three kids and they're pregnant with a fourth. Anyway, they're living in like this slum in New York and they have no money. And that movie ripped me to my core. I cried harder in that movie than I remember crying in like anything. And there are two scenes from that movie that absolutely destroyed me. One scene is uh, they go to like a fair and uh, there it's right around the time ET came out ET a movie that also rocked my world I mean please I cannot ever say oh without wanting to just cry forever um, they're at this fair there's an ET doll his daughter wants the doll and Patty Constantine spends all of the money that they have worked so hard to earn their rent money basically to try to play this game that is rigged against him, like one of those pitching games, to win his daughter an E.T. doll. And that scene reminded me so much of my childhood. Um, I grew up in New York until I was nine. We totally lived on food stamps for a certain amount of time. My parents never had any money, and yet they always sent me to private school. Um, I love my parents so much and me and my dad are extremely close and that is 100% something he would have done for me. He would have given a kidney 
to ensure that I had something like a stuffed animal if it knew if he knew it was going to make me really happy. Like I remember when the Cabbage Patch Kid riot happened in the 80s, I wanted one so badly and my parents could only get me a boy doll. So I cross-dressed it as a girl and I named it Hyanda. I still have it. It is still in a dress. I love it. And I just remember my parents feeling so bad that they couldn't get me a girl. And I didn't care because I had a Cabbage Patch Kid and I could make it a transvestite Cabbage Patch Kid. Um, But that scene destroyed me. And there was another scene in that movie where Samantha Morton is playing hide and seek with the kids. And at one point, Patty Constantine comes home and they're all playing and the, and the wife wants to have like a moment with her husband. And he starts playing hide and go seek with them. And at one point, she says, you didn't find me. Or he says, I didn't find you. And she says, you weren't looking. And I lost it. Because at the time, I was in a relationship with a guy who did not see me, just didn't see me. And we'd been together for a while, and he actually had a lot of depression issues, and he was very much garrisoned and lived in his own head um, and kept me very much at bay, and yet we lived together, and we were together for five years in total. And I just remember when he, she said that line, you weren't looking, I was like, oh my God, that's, that's us. He's not looking. He will never, we are in a game of emotional hide and seek and he will never find me because he is not looking for me. Wow. I need to see this movie because I mean, that just sounds like emotional buttons that will definitely be hit for me as well. Um, I mean, not that I'm in a situation of someone's not looking for me, but that's, that's sad. And I get that. And sometimes I feel like people aren't there um, on a different level too. Like I'm talking to you and we're having a conversation, not you, Sasha, but like talking to someone, having a conversation. And I know that they're not present in that conversation. Does that make sense? Totally. And it's the worst feeling it's, I'm actually talking about it. And like, I feel like I'm shaking like in my core right now because it is such, it's, it's the worst. And in LA, I think it happens a lot. People are constantly sort of looking just past you to see if there's something better on the other side, like somebody more important, something better and more entertaining. And, but yeah, to like be living with a man and know that he is just, you are there as a physical presence, but you're not like in it together. Oh man, I was dumb to stay there. <laughs> but it, I mean, it, yes and no, like, because, you know, you don't, you ha- it takes time to realize that that's the situation that you are in. So that's how relationships work, right? I guess. It shouldn't take you five years. Because keep in <laughs> mind, I stayed with him for like another two years after that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, maybe it wasn't that long. I don't even remember now. Because this was like, I mean, that movie came out in 2002. Okay. Um, did it come out in 2002? Oh my God. If it came out in 2002, then I stayed with him for four more years. Oh wait, I got to Google. Now I got to Google and figure <laughs> out when it came right. out. I'm turning right. my phone because that is going to be, I told you guys, I was just going to like, let my brain run. Let's see. When in we were, America. When we were, while you're looking. Oh, up. it came out in 2003, you guys. Okay. So oh. less, worse than we thought. Oh man. <laughs> We've only been together at that point. No, wait, we got together in 2000. So I've been with him for three years. Yeah, I stayed with him for two more years. Jesus. <laughs> God. Oh, man. Therapy. I need more therapy now just because of that. Yeah, that scene is so... And then in the movie, I should explain. In the movie, they end up playing this sexy game of hide and seek in the rain, and then they end up boning while their kids go to an ice cream shop. So like in the movie, it ends up well in my life. It's like something I do need to see. it's so good you do need to see it it's a beautiful film and it's very personal because Jim Sheridan said it was basically 100% his life and all of his movies have been pretty um, autobiographical and personal but that one was he said 100% based on his experience when him and his family got here nice I do I somewhat remember it now what you're describing to me so I will definitely look that up. You know what I was thinking of uh, as the miniseries was like Angels in America or something. Oh, like yeah. That. The yeah. the uh, Tony Kushner play. Yes. 
Yeah, well, with Meryl Streep. That was my first thought when you said in America. I like that you went theater girl. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to our final question, which is what is a movie that helps you through difficult times? Could be something that kind of inspires in a way, or maybe not, who knows? Okay, okay. So right now, in my brain, I'm thinking about the movie that helped me when I was in high school, the movie that helped me when I broke up with that guy who I should have broken up with way before, who made me all sad when I saw In America, and I'm thinking of the one I watch now. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Before you tell us, there are some, there are some people in the waiting room that have a guess, and they think it's going to be Point Break. They are wrong, but they are right because I do love Point Break and I do love Dirty Dancing. But no, those are not the ones that I turn to. Okay. Okay. In high school, the movie that helped me get through was, they were, well, yeah, it was Dazed and Confused. I was super unpopular when I was in high school. I was, I mean, like, from the minute, so when my family and I moved from New York when I was nine, we moved to Oakland and I was one of like three white people in my school and everyone hated me and everybody thought I was weird. And that just continued until like I finally went off to college. But I am weird, so that's okay. Um, but Dazed and Confused, I used to go to the movie theater by myself, bring my weed, smoke weed in the back of the theater and watch Jason Confused and pretend I was friends with the people who were in high school in Texas. <laughs> so Matthew McConaughey and I were totally homies and we would hang out and I would be smoking weed and they'd be smoking weed and Ben Affleck was in it. There is a Ben Affleck oh, theme today. Um, there is. I like yeah. it. I like it. <laughs> and that made me feel better. When I finally broke up with the guy who broke my heart and made me feel like I wasn't worth anything, the movie that got me through, and this is so embarrassing, I refused to see this movie when it came out, but somebody gave me a screener of it. And I was like, this movie is going to be garbage. And I ended up watching it for like a month straight was Bridget Jones's diary. <laughs> the first one yeah. I was like, this movie, I watched it just on repeat, just repeat, 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 repeat. The movie I watch when I am in a bad place. Wait, is this for me to feel inspired or to feel better? You, it better or, okay. you know, better. Or sometimes people like to go the, this is a really depressing movie, so I feel better about my life. <laughs> yeah. You know? There's no, way. this is not going to be that. Okay. The movie I watch when I want to feel better and I just need a pick-me-up is Blade 3. Okay, <laughs> you guys. Let me, let me explain. Number one, Ryan Reynolds has never been hotter than in Blade 3. Mm -hmm. Number two, Jessica Biel has never been hotter yes. than in Blade 3. I want that movie is like my gym inspiration. I watch that movie and I'm like, I'm gonna go work out and get shoulders like Jessica Biel. That movie, there is a William Shatner random cameo in that movie <laughs> speaking. He's speaking, what is it? It's, it was called, um, it was a combination of like English, Spanish, French. It was, what was it called? It was called like Spaganglish or something. And it was the one movie that was ever shot in this particular language. Oh no, Esperanto. It's called Esperanto. It's called Esperanto. <laughs> Esperanto. Okay. <laughs> And it, I mean, that film is so, and it's the dude from uh, Prison Break. That movie is so ridiculous and so fun and so totally mindless. It is a, the best a pick me up. Blade 3 basically is, it, it's, can, it's just cotton candy. It dissolves instantly once you're done with it. it. It leaves no trace except for maybe like a little film on your tongue. And it just makes you feel like I can go out and conquer the world and I'm gonna go do curls forever and maybe take up archery because Jessica Biel in that movie is so bomb. Now, so bomb. I think I've seen this because I know I've seen a Blade movie for sure. And I- Was Steven Dorff in it? I, well, I know that uh, Ryan Reynolds and Jessica Biel were in it. And that's the only one they were in. Okay, good. Then I've that's seen Blade that. Three. <laughs> Blade Three. Blade yeah. Three. The best. It's the best. And if you haven't watched it, you must. It will make you feel better about everything. Because it's just complete ridiculousness. Ridiculousness and like, oh, but the hotness is so on point. And Parker Posey is in it. And Parker Posey is a queen. I mean, it's just super fun. 
And it's just one of those movies where you can switch off your brain, let it wash over you, but the action is rad. Blade 3, man. Blade 3 is the ultimate pick-me-up. I love it. I love how the variety of films that people bring on this show are because like, I'm like, I don't think anyone will ever bring Blade 3 <laughs> to this show again. So I'm so glad that you brought it because that's hilarious. I love well, it. You can say, what's the movie that you watch when you want to feel smart? You said, what's the movie you watch when you want to feel better? That's, that's the movie true. I watch when I want to that's feel better. True. And when I want to go to the gym, because I'm telling you, man, <laughs> you cannot watch that movie and not be like, I should eat more protein and broccoli. Yeah. I got to go work out. Yep. There's totally, I've got, I've got a lot of those. Well, and also if you watch the special features on the DVD or the Blu-ray, which I have many times, they show you what they were eating and kind of their workouts. And I've tried to recreate some of them, like lots of like lunges with like weights and like curls. Yes. I love that when, um, Jessica Simpson had her show, you know, with Nick Lachey and uh -huh. like you were seeing her workouts for the uh, movie of um, Dukes of Hazard. Dukes of Hazard. And I was like, oh man, I need to get on this right away. <laughs> did you watch Newlyweds? Did you just admit that you watched Newlyweds, oh, Brianna? Of course I did. Of course I did. And I always wondered why she like didn't have a proper closet. She had like a room. And I was like, wait a minute like make the room like at least a closet because like it's just like hooks of like, like a awesome. bar it's like a bar that you like can move in and out and i was like it doesn't it's on wheels and stuff and i was like girl like you got to you got to make this look nice what do you I got to tell you i never watched a single episode of newlyweds but now i'm going to watch one just so i can see your closet <laughs> yeah it's just a room you like barely you like barely see in it because I don't think that they're allowed to go to a certain point. Like the cameraman clearly cannot go into certain rooms. So you can just see when the door is open and closed and it's like a room closet. It's basically like a, a, a bedroom as a closet. That's kind of my dream. <laughs> it's a little bit my dream. Like just a room where like all of my stuff is and maybe there's posters of Ryan Reynolds everywhere. <laughs> So yes, I have watched Newlyweds, uh, probably watched all of them, maybe, maybe. No judgment, girl. No judgment. This is a safe space. Yes. I also watched Ashley's uh, show or a little bit of hers, a little bit of hers. Wow. I didn't before. watch that either. It was like after that, that's when the Kardashians took over and I was like, this is, I, I want to get back to like Newlyweds. <laughs> like, that was kind of more Yeah, more, I went from- speed. I went from real world to two a days to being too fucking old to watch MTV. And then I just went off to do my own thing. <laughs> there you go. I always liked the gauntlet and stuff like that, you know, or they do the challenges. I was like, they, do they even do real world and road rules anymore? Now they just do the challenges. Anyways, we're way off, <laughs> but Hey, that's what we do here. Thank you, Sasha, for coming on this show. Thank you, Brianne, for having me on the show. This was super fun. Where can the other patients and those in the waiting room find you? Uh, you can find me, and please do if you are a Blade 3 fan like me, <laughs> uh, at Sasha Pearl Raver on Instagram and Twitter and on Fridays hosting FX Movie Download, <gasps> on Mondays hosting Collider TV Talk, which is super fun, and I will be on Schmoes on the 27th. Nice. I like that you have your schedule. Very exciting. Thanks, um, dude. You can find me on Twitter at Miss Movies. I'm there all the time. And send me your nice, sweet tweets. Not your mean ones. I don't want mean tweets. I'm not a celebrity, so I can't get, I'm not supposed to get mean tweets, right? Yeah. Actually, my, my best friend just said to me, he was like, dude, you've reached a place in your life where you now have trolls. I think that means you made it. I was like, mm, that's a terrible, terrible barometer. <laughs> you don't deserve mean tweets, dude. You don't deserve mean tweets. You don't deserve mean YouTube comments. You're way too nice for that. And neither do you. Well, thanks, man. But I'm not doing a public service. You're doing a public service by doing the show. Oh, okay. Well, thanks. Uh, Randall Sands says he's forever a follower, Sasha. So there you Randall, go. you're the man. Thanks, dude. Thanks for making me feel nice every day. Um, so thank you all for joining us today. We will see you on our next session of film therapy. So bye. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. 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 <laughs>